Give me an L. L. Give me an I. I. Give me a C. C. Give me a K! K! Give me an S! S. What's that spell? Lex. That's right, Lex! 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 And welcome aboard. Uh, my name's Paul, and in this hour, we're going to be going over some techniques that I use to work on my picking, my uh, left hand hammer ons and pull offs, and a lot of different arpeggio techniques. Uh, I'll also give you fingerings that you can put those in and make actual music. But before we get started, let's tune up. Here's an E, a B, a G. The D, an A, and the low E. For the first couple of years that I played guitar, I was pretty convinced that I'd never be able to pick fast. It pretty much all goes back to some guitar lessons I had when I was six. Uh, I got discouraged and gave up and then started again when I was nine, but I had a real warped memory of how to play the guitar, what the guy had shown me. For some reason, I thought that he told me only to do upstrokes with my right hand and only to use the middle finger on my left hand, which uh, you can imagine how limiting that was to my playing. I, was, I was, uh, remember hearing something where I had to do uh, kind of a gallop. <laughs> And I was trying it with all upstrokes. It was, it was impossible. I just <laughs> definitely a lot of trouble. Uh, when I was 11, I started taking guitar lessons again, and uh, the teacher took one look at me and said, "Well, you know, you can do downstrokes, and you can use the other fingers on your left hand." And uh, after that, things definitely uh, progressed a lot faster. Uh, one of the licks that really, really helped up my picking a lot is uh, based on. Uh, it's something I call just three note per string patterns where you have three notes on a string. In this case, uh, for this exercise, we're using uh, B, C, and D on the 12th fret of the B string. Uh, you start with a downstroke, and then to alternate pick, you just do uh, something different than you did the last time. So it'd be uh, down on the B, an up on the C, and a down on the D. The, uh, the hardest thing about alternate picking is when you have to go to the next string. Uh, you have to jump and, and, you know, there's tons of noises that uh, can happen if you're not careful. A real good exercise for this is basically doing just that, jumping over the string. Uh, 
the note I hit is E with my first finger on the 12th fret of the high E string. Uh, so the exercise has got only four notes in it. And then I go back down and I descend. So the whole thing sounds like that. Sounds pretty simple like that when you speed it up. It's a great lick. Right there at the end, I did a uh, sequence that basically just exaggerates the more difficult part of the lick, which is crossing over the string. Uh, I go from the E to the D note, which is on two different strings, and it would be an upstroke on the E and a down on the D. And I do that twice before I descend. So the whole lick is going to sound like this. One more time. If you have trouble with this, uh, really concentrate on getting the upstrokes on the E note. That's uh, a lot of times if I have trouble with a lick, I can kind of pinpoint the problem, and I found that usually is the problem in that one is doing the ups on the E note. You can even exaggerate the motion at first. You won't be able to play it as quickly, but it'll help you play it clean or help it get help the idea in your mind. So um, let's hear that one up to speed. Uh, it also sounds really good alternated with the normal four up and down. That would be something like this. So the first time I just go straight and then alternate between the two. Real aggressive sounding. One of the uh, one of the ways to practice this uh, that really helps a lot also is to uh, try it with a clean tone. A lot of times with the distortion it masks uh, the way the string will sound. So when initially practicing these you might want to have a cleaner tone. You may have to pick a little bit harder than you would with distortion, but it gives you a lot of control and it's a lot easier to lighten up on the pick and uh, than it is to get harder. So playing with a clean tone really helps that. Another variation that really helped my picking out a lot is uh, real similar to the four note sequence, except this time it's got six notes. Uh, basically the same thing, we'll keep the same position, just add F sharp and G, which will keep us in E minor. Again, you've got that same upstroke on the E note. I keep thinking about that. And yeah, let's hear that one up to speed. That's one of my favorites. This sounds real good in combination with four, if you do four notes up and down and then six notes up and down. That's going to sound like this. Let me do that slow so you can hear how it goes. One more time. I use a lot of these combinations between four, six, and also going between the two strings uh, for improvisation, this kind of thing. <laughs> Loads of fun. The, uh, the next sequence is probably the first thing, the first lick that I can really play fast with picking. Uh, the, um, the lick is very similar to the sixes lick, except I don't descend, I only ascend. Uh, it'll be a little lower in the neck. I'll start on the low E string on the seventh fret, the B note. This is still in the key of E minor. Um, there are a lot of shapes in this that are real good for the left hand also. The first one would be a half step and a whole step. It would be B, C, and D. 
And then E, F sharp, and G is the same thing we're doing, but two octaves lower. And I'm only ascending, only going up. The uh, pattern continues on the A string, and you can see the last three notes I played were on the A string. So I just shift up to the next position, staying diatonic with that scale, which would give me the notes F sharp, G, and A. The shape, the left hand shape, would be a half step and a whole step. So basically what I'm doing is going up six notes and then shifting to the next pattern. From there, I do another pattern of six based on that position shift. So uh, the pattern of six will be F sharp, G, A, and then B, C, D. On the D string, tenth position, you have the same shape of a half step and a whole step. And you're staying in the key of E minor. So that's going to sound like this. All alternate picking. So the upstrokes that you really want to watch are the E note, right here, and then the B note. There are certainly are other upstrokes, but those are the ones that will be the hardest because that's where you have to cross over the next string. From there, just keep doing the pattern where uh, we ended on the D string, so go up to the next position on the D string, which should be uh, two whole steps, uh, C, D, and E. And then uh, to the G string to do our six pattern, which would give us the notes F sharp, G, and A. This is a shape that a lot of people find uncomfortable initially, but it's, it's uh, real useful to learn it because it's uh, diatonic to E minor if you start on C. So, so far we have this. Uh, let's continue. After we get to the A note, go up to the 12th fret on the G string and do two whole steps, B, G, A, and B. Then on the B string, to continue our pattern of six, we'd have C, D, and D. From there, let's continue, go to the D note on the 15th fret of the B string with your first finger and do a pattern, the shape is again two whole steps. The notes would be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. So basically what we have here is just a bunch of ascending sixes, patterns of six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And because of the way it's fingered, each of those will start with a downstroke. Down, 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 down. So if you can practice that one initial lick, all the rest should be fairly easy to do. Because they're all picked this exactly the same way. Um, let's give it a try up the tempo, you can hear how it sounds. Real hip. This sequence is pretty much the next step in, uh, in picking. It uh, involves a major scale, a C major harmonized all three notes per string. So uh, it's pretty much straight C major, but it's got all three notes on each string. The pattern that I use within it, uh, the initial one, I took that four sequence again. We'll get real comfortable with this one after a while. Taking those, uh, that same kind of pattern, four notes up and down, one, two, three, four, and back down. Then I went up six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, that's pretty much the sequence. One, two, three, four, back down, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I do that based on each set of two strings. Right there I did it on the E and the A. Next I'll do it on the A and the D, keeping the shape of the scale so I stay in the key of C. Or a minor if you're a diehard rock player. Uh, next I'll do the uh, D and G strings. Same kind of sequence each time, but just changing the left hand shape slightly to stay in the key. Uh, then the G and B strings. That's a little more difficult for the left hand. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, I found the way that's easiest for me is just to reach across with your second finger 
to go to the B string. And then shift up to your first finger on that same A note when you ascend in the six note pattern. Sounds complicated, but when you try it yourself, it'll be great. And then the last two strings, the B and E strings. So the whole thing together, up to tempo, let's give it a try. Pretty terrifying. Uh, let's slow it down a little bit so you can hear how it sounds rhythmically. Time up to tempo. One thing when you're practicing these kind of licks that's really important and uh, very easy to ignore if you're not careful is uh, the synchronization between the left and right hands. Uh, always make sure that you've got one pick per note with your left hand. You don't want to be doing uh, that, that sort of thing. You know, if you lose synchronization, it starts to sound really kind of sloppy. Um, and uh, once you get a real synchronized feel happening, you know, you'll have, uh, you'll still, you'll still, it won't hurt your unsynchronized playing. You'll have no trouble sounding, uh, sounding like this if you want to, so don't worry about losing that. Uh, and you'll have gained something much cooler, I have a feeling, by playing with synchronization. Another version of that pattern is exactly the same thing, but uh, starting on the highest note of the scale, which is F, and basically just reversing the pattern. Uh, originally, it was four up and down, and then six up. So what I'm doing is starting on the highest note and going four down and up, and then six down. Let me play that real slow. The uh, one thing that's a little bit hard to get used to, uh, picking-wise, is that I start with a downstroke on this. Which is going to feel a lot different than the ascending version. Um, let's do the whole scale that way. Um, at a slower tempo, it sounds like this. than the B and G strings. Two middle strings. The D and the A string. And the lowest two strings, A and E. One time in tempo, really slow tempo. One thing you can use to get between licks that ascend and descend uh, is a pattern I came up with. Uh, I'll go ahead and explain it. Starts out, uh, it's all in C major, and it starts on the G note on the B string, eighth fret. And uh, the left hand shape will do two whole steps. So we have G, A, and B. And the same shape on the high E string, which would be uh, C, D, and E. More sixes. Right there, we'll shift up to the 13th fret by sliding your pinky. And uh, right there, I'll descend in a 6 in the same key. Our shape's going to have to change slightly. We'll have a whole step and a half step instead of two whole steps. Uh, the notes would be F, E, and D on the high E string, and C, B, and A on the B string. Right there, I slide back down to my original position. So this one sounds like this. That's a tool I use uh, for getting between ascending and descending scales. Let's say I've got that uh, lick that we just learned in C.
I'll shift up on the last six to the next position and descend uh, in another lick. Let's uh, let's take that same pattern. but uh, in a slightly different shape, which I will show you later. So uh, let's give it a try. Up to tempo, so you can hear how it sounds. And uh, it stays, the rhythm keeps pretty, uh, pretty much the same. You don't have to worry about uh, kind of floating around rhythmically. It's real good. Uh, you know, this, this kind of thing. It keeps the triplet going. Another real good exercise is doing that same kind of thing, but on uh, larger amounts of strings. You could take uh, four strings in a scale. I'm keeping the top two notes, or two strings the same. The ones in the middle strings, uh, the notes would be A, B, and C, and D, E, and F. The shape's a whole step and a half step. And the one we just did with two whole steps, starting on G. Right there, setting up to the F note and descending using four strings. You already know the notes on the E string and the B string. Let's go to the G and D. The notes would be uh, G, F, E, and D. C, B, and then slide back down to your original position. So let's go through this a couple times. You can hear how it sounds, and we'll do it slow. Again, the rhythm stays, stays real even. Uh, you can even tap your foot to it. The... Uh, thing to watch out for when practicing this, uh, as, as far as the uh, ups and downs go, when you shift, it's going to be a downstroke. In fact, you may just want to practice that much. And then uh, do the same kind of thing when you descend. Just take those two sections, which both end with downstrokes, and also start with upstrokes. And then, after you get those two comfortable, put them together. Uh, possibilities are endless. You can use all six strings. I'd like to show you some techniques that, uh, a little more modern, I refer to them as guitar tricks because they use some pretty unorthodox hand moves. Let's get started with the first one. So pick up your guitar. One of the important things about this, it's a two-handed lick, so you have to figure out what to do with your pick. You know, I pretty much just whiz mine in the air. You don't need it at all. Um, first of all, it's a pretty wide stretch. Take your left hand, stick your first finger on the A note, uh, fifth fret on the high E string. Take your pinky and put it on the uh, D note, tenth fret of the high string. And because it's a two-handed lick, you sort of reach up with your right hand uh, and just reach up and pull a rabbit out of the guitar. So, now we have a lot of sequences to practice that have a three note per string idea. Let's put those into some three note per string scales so we can play them in actual music. I've started off with some major scales. Basically, I've got C major starting on each step of the scale. The lowest one I can fit in the neck starts on F, sounds like this. Next one starts on G. This one starts on A, on B, and we just keep moving up on the neck, staying within the key and starting on consecutive uh, scale tones. Let's go over those one more time. 
a little quicker so you can hear the sound of the tempo. <laughs> go. Uh, a few more examples of this. Let's try it. Uh, let's try an exercise that I use a lot for my picking and, and also for visualizing scales. Uh, start an A note on the fifth fret of the low E string and uh, just go straight up in C major or A minor. The shape would be a whole step and a half step. A, B, C, D, E, F. And then do it in octaves. So you start on the A and the D string and the A and the B string, keeping the same shape every time. On the picking, each section will start out with a downstroke. Down, down, down. Right there, I shifted to the high A on the 17th fret and descend in sixes. So we've done this kind of idea before, but not in octaves. Uh, so we'll now we'll go an octave lower to the A on the G string and another octave lower to the A on the A string. Also those will start with downstrokes. Down, 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 down. And hit the A there and start over with the ascending part. Up to tempo, that'll sound like this. That's uh, it's a real good rhythm to it. And... Uh, pretty terrifying with the range. And plus you get to move your left hand around a lot and, and impress all the neighbors. There's a lot more you can do with three string scales besides major. Uh, I've harmonized a lot of different shapes. Uh, the first couple are that same kind of idea where you play them in octaves. So all you have to do is memorize the shape of the first two strings and everything else will just be the same shape an octave higher. It makes these real easy to learn. Uh, the first one's a blues scale. Normally when you play the blues scale it's kind of a pentatonic type shape. Which is uh, cool to phrase with, but it's real hard to play up and down incredibly fast. And uh, the three number string one works great for this. So uh, let's give it a try. The shape, fairly big stretch. We've got a minor third between your first and third finger on the low E string, and then a whole step higher with your pinky. Then on the A string, it's kind of a weird shape. It's a half step in sixth position, so you'd be playing uh, E flat, E, and G. And it gives you that, basically just one octave of the blue scale in the key of A. Then I take it up an octave, sort of an A note on the D string, do that exact same shape, which gives you the exact same notes. And same idea starting on the A note on the B string, these are the same notes. And you can use a lot of the sequences that we've already played and get a, a different sound using those different shapes. But it's basically just the same technique and you have to uh, have your left hand learn something slightly different, but it shouldn't be hard, too hard to translate. <laughs> The next scale, yet another octave idea. Uh, this one's very similar to, uh, almost identical to a natural minor scale, except there's no sixth. Uh, it sounds like this. Basically, uh, one thing to notice is that you've got a pretty wide stretch in the A string. And this would be A, B, C. Not too bad, but then you got D, E, and G. No F. The F's the sixth in A. It's gone. And we'll do the same idea where we take it up in octaves. So try that shape. Starting on the A note of the G, uh, D string. And the A note of the B string. I really like the sound of this one a lot. For my next guitar trick, I'd like to perform an extremely difficult feat of magic involving handcuffs, a straitjacket, a beautiful assistant, 
and a canvas mailbag that would make Houdini think twice. Let's get right to it. Let's stick the old hand covers on there. Number two, you can see. You don't come off. A straight jacket. Right about now, the guitar is shivering in terror. Why is it shivering in terror? Because it knows what's to come. Stick these around here. Tighten them up. And as you can see, there'll be no getting out of this one today. Well, last but not least, the dreaded mailbag of doom. Stick her on in there. Of course, accompanying the mailbag of doom, are the padlocks of doom. Number one and number two and here we go. Voila! Pretty darn amazing if I do this on myself. Here's a harmonic minor shape that's harmonized sinus per string. Works real well with a lot of these patterns. Let me start from the uh, highest part uh, because a lot of the licks I do in this are descending oriented. It's just with two whole steps and then uh, you have a half step and a whole step kind of a shape. And that gives it that real characteristic harmonic minor sound. Put your uh, six notes up and down pattern into it. It sounded real good. Right there, you've got a fairly big left hand shift, which happens a lot of times in three-number string scales. But once you get used to it, the picking—it's uh, worth the picking ease. Right there, a fairly simple shape, but it's kind of far in position from the top two strings. So you might want to work on that shift. You gotta move your first finger a whole step up or a whole step down, depending on whether you're ascending or descending. On the uh, lower strings, you get a fairly big stretch, a half step and a minor third, and then uh, just a half step and a whole step at the end. One of my favorites right now, this is uh, sort of an unorthodox way of playing this scale, but uh, has a lot of unique possibilities. Um, most of the time when guitar players play the chromatic scale, they'll do it four notes per string, which is a great way of playing it. It's very efficient. Uh, you just have four notes, one, two, three, four. Going up each time. Uh, basically, when I play chromatic, I use that scale most of the time. But uh, for a, a strange effect, you can take uh, the chromatic and harmonize it three notes per string. Uh, not nearly as efficient, but you can take the three notes per string phrasing licks, apply it to the scale, and get a lot of neat sounds. Uh, the scale would be like this, starting on E. So you have pretty big position shifts every time. But let's say... Um, Let's go back to the pattern that went up and down four and up six and translate it into the chromatic pattern that we just did. 
So if you translate this pattern into the chromatic shape, it would sound like this. You're going a pretty big left hand skip, but uh, if you get comfortable with that kind of sequence, uh, it really isn't that bad. Sounds kind of funny to slow tempo, but uh, at a fast tempo, it sounds really funny. Try that again. This is loads of fun. You can annoy your parents forever with that one. You know, there really is a lot you can do with just that little old pick, but, you know, in a way it's kind of limiting when you know that there's a possibility of using not one, but three picks on the end of a drill. There's really nothing like it. Ah, beautiful, beautiful music. Almost as cool as a polka. All right, let's say good morning to our left hand. We're going to do some uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. The first one is one that really got my left hand going a lot. It's a five-note sequence, and uh, basically got one note on the high E string, A note, fifth fret, and... Uh, on the B string, we've got three notes, G, F, and D. On the D string, with your third finger, play the D note, seventh fret, and then just go back up. So it's five notes up and down. One, two, three, four, five, and back to your original. One of the good things about this lick is it uses all your fingers. So besides being a cool sounding lick, it's a real good exercise. When we play it up to tempo, you can hear how it sounds. Now, although there are a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs in this, I still am picking. Basically, my rule for hammer-ons and pull-offs is I pick every time I change to a different string. Uh, I occasionally may pick a little more than that to get a little more aggressiveness out of it, but uh, as a bare minimum, I always pick when I go to the next string. So for this, uh, basically I pick the first two notes because I change strings, then do two pull-offs, then pick the next two strings, and then hammer on the next two notes. So the whole thing is like pick, pick, pull off, pull off, pick, pick, hammer, hammer. It's kind of a good sequence to remember. And again, it'll sound like this. There's a lot of variations of that that you'll see soon. A uh, thing that you can add to that that'll give it a real good sound is something like this. It's got three notes ascending, A, B, C, and then you'll go down as far as the G note on the B string. So the whole thing goes A, B, C, B, A, G. That in itself is a real good pull-up. And in combination with the earlier one, it sounds really good. That'll sound like this. That's what we just did, and then the earlier one. The next sequence is an exercise I use not only to build my left hand, but it's also a real good sounding phrase. Uh, let's start fairly high up on the 13th fret of the B string on the C note. Uh, this will all be in a kind of a whole step shape. A whole step between each finger, it'll be uh, C, D, and D. And uh, the whole idea of this lick, you'll always play those notes on the B string, but the note on the E string alternates. First you do an F note with your first finger on the 13th fret, and then descend. Then you do basically the same thing, but instead of playing the F, you'll bar with your third finger and play the G. Uh, a lot of people do whole steps with their second finger. If that's the case, that'll work fine, whatever is comfortable. Uh, then use your pinky and bar and get the A note. So each time the notes on the B string are the same, but the note on the E string changes between F, G, and A. And that up to tempo will sound like this. The next pull-off pattern is one of my favorites. 
because it's got more of a 16th note or a 4 feel. With a lot of the 3 note per string patterns, it's real easy to get into a real triplet sound. We have you know, triplet, 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 and uh, that can sound real good. Uh, you know, I must admit, I love that sound, but anything gets old after a while, so uh, it's nice to get more of a 16th note da -da 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 kind of sound. Um, this f uh, particular sequence has the same fingering in a 3 string scale, but because of the way it's sequenced, has more of a 16th note or a 4 feel. And here's how it sounds. Let's put it in uh, our uh, old faithful 3 string C major scale. And the order of notes will go like this. Uh, basically, you just go up four notes again. And then go right to the A note with your pinky. And then go back to the F. And then I'll send three notes in that scale, which should be F, G, and A. A uh, lot easier just to listen to it. It's slow. Let's, let's, let's do just that. And you can hear how there's two sets of four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Also works real well for picking but I've preferred for left hand. There I did that same sequence, just using each set of strings in that C major scale. And a lot of times that can the phrases you can come up with using that sequence are a lot more interesting. For my next guitar trick, I will perform one of the most dangerous and difficult guitar tricks you can do. I will take the guitar, I will place it into the box of terror, I will then put on my safety goggles beautiful assistant Lisa can get for me. Thank you so much. And put on my rubber safety gloves. Ooh, ah. Rubber safety glove number two. I will now attempt to saw through the box of terror, leaving the guitar without a scratch. Chainsaw, please. Abracadabra! <laughs> and now it will remain without... a scratch. For a long time, I didn't even know what arpeggios were. I remember looking up the word in the dictionary and it said, notes of a chord played separately. Then uh, it just didn't, just didn't hit in there. Uh, finally, when I moved to California, I saw a lot of players doing actual arpeggios and it really inspired me to work on it. Uh, one of the exercises that I really recommend is taking a smaller sequence for sweep picking and working on that as opposed to all six strings because if you're not used to sweep picking it's really a pretty difficult technique and uh, a lot of times even if you are used to it it's still difficult uh, so try taking a small chunk at first and working on that uh, here's a real good one it's part of a C major triad sweep uh, it's just got four notes 
it'll be uh, two notes on the high E string, G and D, C on the B string, 13th fret, with your second finger, and your first finger on the 12th fret of the G string, G note. So just four notes, and uh, just descend over and over again. Now the tricky part is the picking of it, which will be a down stroke and three up strokes, and that three up strokes is the sweep. That'll sound like this. The important thing is to get it even in tempo. You don't want to rush the three up strokes, even though they're probably going to be a lot easier to do. You may tend to do this initially to make them faster than the other part. But what we really want to do is get a solid four feel. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Another variation you can do with that sequence that has really helped my economy picking a lot is uh, adding two notes in the beginning. The two notes are G and F, and then doing that four-note sequence that we just did. So it sounds like this. Kind of gives it a pedal tone feel. Has a kind of sort of a classical sound to it. You can go even further and add a couple notes in the D string. Let's try adding E and D. And that'll sound like this when added on to that previous lick. So for the picking for that, you, you can see you've got a lot of upstrokes and downstrokes in a row. Uh, let me run through the picking real quick so you can get the hang of it. It'll be uh, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, 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 down up. The cool thing about that is it has a definite rhythm to it, where a lot of times when you're initially doing sweep picking, it's easy to forget the rhythm. Let me show you some uh, examples of applying that sequence to actual music. <laughs> One thing I've been working on a lot lately is sequencing arpeggios, uh, basically playing them in some way besides straight up and down, just blah, 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 blah. Um, an example of some techniques that work really well for that, I'm using them, figuring them a little more two note per string oriented, uh, almost like a pentatonic scale, but figuring the notes in a way where it sounds like an arpeggio. In fact, it is an arpeggio. Uh, let's start off on the high E string, it'll be G and D, there's two notes. Then go right down to the G string, B and G, and then with your second finger on the D string, hit the E note. So right there you have all the notes out of an E minor triad. And I just go up and down using hammer runs and pull-offs. Another thing, it's, it's real easy to get a real good tone with distortion using this kind of technique. It's also very easy to sequence it. Uh, you could maybe go down three notes and then go back up and then back down. So you can do the notes in a lot of different orders so it's not just straight up and down. You can do a sequence like this. Let me take that slow for you one time. So I do go straight down the first time back up as far as the E, and then back down the G, then to the octave G, down three notes, and down another three notes starting on E. Probably much easier just to hear it slow. Let's try it again. And then over and over. One way of playing arpeggios that I've had a lot of success with is string skipping. Uh, basically what this is, is playing some notes on one string, like uh, say the G string, and completely skipping 
uh, the adjacent string, which would be the B, and going right to the E. This was a real good way of getting arpeggios by using hammer-ons and pull-offs. The first one that I did, which uh, I really like the sound of and still use a lot, is uh, an E minor 7th. The uh, notes, you have a pretty big stretch in the G string, it'd be uh, D, E, and G. Then you don't use the B string at all, you can cut it off with a chainsaw or whatever. Uh, on the E string you'll play B, D, and D. You'll your use your second finger on the G string and your third finger on the E string. A lot of times I'll add a lower note with my third finger on the G note, tenth fret of the A string. You can use sequences that you used in your hammer-on pull-off licks within these. They translate real well. Also, two-handed stuff works real well in, com in combination with this. Uh, for example, try adding on a G note. Or maybe sliding up to the B note. Uh, sliding may take a while to get used to, but uh, after you wear those initial grooves in your first finger, it'll sound real cool. Well, in order to play the hip licks, you need the hip tones, and uh, here's where they come from. I've got uh, pretty much the uh, one of my favorite things of all time, the new uh, 88 MP1. The real cool thing about it is that uh, not only does it sound great, but you get some incredible switching with it. Uh, by pressing one button, you can change everything that's MIDI plus kick in stuff in the effects loop. Uh, give me an example. I get my normal distortion problem. <laughs> Button. And I got a real cool clean tone with a completely different reverb and chorus on it. Uh, press another button and I get a uh, real loud lead sound with chorus and echo on it. Down hip, press another button, and you, it turns the harmonizer on. <laughs> but really, the most important thing in my tone is uh, the kind of high end I have. It's not, it's not treble so much, but it's 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 more like uh, the presence. You know, you know the the presence. Here's another shape that translates real well with a lot of the left hand licks that we've done earlier. Um, this is a way of playing minor triads with a wider stretch. Uh, let's try this one. It's, it's in the key of B. And you have a pretty big stretch. You'll do uh, B, D, and F sharp, all in the B string. Be the uh, 12th, 15th, and 19th frets. Then with your third finger, reach down to the 16th fret of the D string. So again, you're skipping over the G string. You don't have to use it all. And just doing hammer-ons, ascending, pull-offs, descending, and then pick the low note. So that alone will sound like this. Which is a real smooth sounding triad. It's real hard to get that same kind of tone out of sweep picking. Uh, to get a better range out of it, you could add the high B by barring with your pinky on the high E string. I really like the sound of the notes. If you tried to sweep pick that, it'd, uh, it'd be very difficult to get that same kind of tone out of the string. Especially with distortion. This works really well. Here's a variation of that same idea. It involves some pretty wild left hand shapes. Uh, this would be E minor triads. I'm doing uh, the same kind of idea. It'd be E, G, and B on the high E string, 12th position. And I took that shape and put it uh, exact shape, starting on E in two different octaves. So you have some pretty wild string skipping to do. Your first one, you skip over two strings and go down to the D string. 
exact same notes, exact same shape, but different string, and you have to move up a whole step. Let's try that much. Uh, let's try starting on the note on the D string, go up, E, G, B, and then go back to the E string, E, G, B, and then descend on both strings. So all together, that'll sound like this. Gonna have to bend over your guitar and make the huge stretch for that one, but occasionally, if you get lucky, it'll work. To continue that, you can get the lower octave on the low E string, sitting on the E note, and doing those same notes E, G, and B with the same stretch. Let's give that a try. Whoa, wild and crazy. Well, I've definitely had a blast showing you all my favorite licks, and I hope that the information will help you out in your own playing. And uh, I'd just like to thank Martin and Roger for putting up with all my ridiculous ideas, and of course Steve for uh, making the music happen, and of course Lisa for looking marvelous. And uh, right now I'd like to do my last and, and final magic trick for you. Uh, I'm going to make the guitar disappear. Uh, this time it'll work for sure, no problem. Hey, <laughs> the wrong video.